All right, welcome to video 15.3. This will be looking at uh, creating buffers and buffer capacity. Um, main ideas here are to explain how to calculate um, to create a buffer, and number five is uh, describe the meaning um, of buffer capacity. So we'll actually start with the buffer capacity. Uh, buffer capacity is the amount of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions that a buffer can handle before a significant change in pH occurs. Um, a large buffering capacity means it can absorb large amounts of those two ions before a noticeable change in uh, pH takes place. Okay, So a good buffer is one that can um, absorb large amounts of those two ions. Because um, you'll see that we can have two buffers um, that have the exact same pH, but one can absorb more. And uh, let's take a look at how that happens. Uh, the optimal buffering capacity will take place when um, the H plus concentration and the A minus concentration are equal to each other, but also they're, they're relatively larger numbers. Okay, so it's possible you could have both those things be um, 0.1 molar for each of them, for each of those two ions. You could also have it where it's um, 0.2 molar for each of those two things. Okay, uh, the one that is they're now they're both equal, so they're, they're they're decent buffers, but the one that has a higher amounts of both those two things, larger concentrations, that'll be a better buffer. Okay, and here's kind of why. Um, when HA is equal to A minus, or they're roughly equal to each other, okay, um, the ratio in Henderson Hasselbach, pH equals pKa plus log of the base, A minus, over the acid there. When those two guys right there are equal to each other, this right here is equal to 1, essentially then. And when that's equal to 1, the log of 1 is 0. Okay, So, um, therefore, buffers are their best when pH equals pKa. Okay, Now, it's not going to be exactly pH equals pKa. Usually, you don't have this exactly 1 here. But when the ratio is close to 1, okay, that's when your buffer does the best uh, buffering job, I guess, has the best capacity um, and can absorb the most at that particular time. Okay, uh, So therefore, the desired pH for a buffered solution um, should be the same as pKa, or roughly to it. So pH that you want your buffer to be, you want your pKa to be there. So we actually have to select the correct acid that we're going to choose for this, because every acid has a different Ka value. Therefore, they have different pKa values. So a certain acid has to match up with the desired pH you're looking for. Okay, so here's a little practice problem to kind of take us through this. Let's say I want to create a buffer that has an optimal buffering capacity around pH of 4.21. Um, we want to know which one would be the best choice in terms of which acid um, and its conjugate base that would go with it will be the best one to choose. And we also want to know which one would have the best uh, concentration um, for the, 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 the weak acid and its conjugate base. So let's look at the first column. So if you want a pH around 4.21, we need to investigate the pKa. And a pKa that would be near that would also be 4.21. Okay, so we're looking at when pH is near pKa. So when you have a pKa of this, we need to convert this back into Ka. And the way you undo uh, pH, pKa, p whatever, you do 10 to the negative of that thing there. That's how you undo P. So when we do that, 10 to the negative 4.21 will give us a Ka value of about 6.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. And the one that matches up closest to that, so we're looking kind of like exponents here, so 10 to the negative fourth, negative second, fourth, negative fifth, negative fifth. So these are both negative fifth. Uh, benzoic acid here has the closest Ka value um, to what the pKa would translate into. So this particular acid and its conjugate, which would be, you know, if it was ic here, that came from benzoate. So that would be the, the conjugate base there. So if you have benzoic acid and benzoate mixed together, um, you could get a um, pH of about 4.21. Now the second part is the concentration here. The concentration of these two guys, they should be roughly equal to each other. Okay, so A would be a good combination because they're equal to each other. 
so is B because they're roughly equal to each other. But then C and D here, now the ratio of those two things start to get kind of out of, uh, out of sync there. They're not close to an equal relationship, so those are not very good choices. And same with the last one. This one's much larger than that one, so those are not good choices. Now between these two, they're, they're, they're both good buffers because they, um, they're equal to each other in terms of the ratio of acid to conjugate base. But the larger concentration is the better one because that means it can absorb more, um, more H plus ions and hydroxide ions, so this is the best choice in terms of concentration. So we would like to choose benzoic acid uh, present with its conjugate base benzoate in a concentration of 0.5 to 0.5 because it could buffer the best and around a pH of about 4.21. Now if you want to create a buffer, there's really two ways to do it. Uh, the first way is you will add the salt that has the conjugate base of a weak acid. So for example, I guess the easiest one to think about is um, acetic acid, HC2H3O2. Its conjugate base is acetate, so that would be C2H3O2. And we need to add its salt, so just, you know, sodium or potassium. So sodium acetate added to acetic acid would provide the, cross off the spectator here, sodium, that would provide the conjugate base of this weak acid. And that mixture of those two things there would be a buffer. Um, another way to do it, and this, this is kind of combined into one here because they're looking at opposites here. Another way to make a buffer is to neutralize a weak acid. I forgot the, weak, the word weak here. If you neutralize a weak acid, which would be HA, into about half of itself, that means whatever you have for HA, you only have about half of it left over. And when you neutralize half of it, you'll turn into its conjugate base. So you'll have about half of it turned into A minus. And now AHA and A minus are about equal to each other. So if you neutralize an acid by half, you can also create a buffer by doing this. Um, we can also neutralize a weak base. We can like do the opposite. The weak base would be B. If you neutralize it by about half, you would turn into its conjugate acid, which would be the BH um, plus version. Okay, Those are conjugates of each other there. And when you neutralize half of it, they're equal to each other. And again, you have a base. or So you have a buffer. So remember, buffers are either a weak acid and their conjugate base in relatively equal amounts, or it's a weak base and it's conjugate acid in equal amounts. And each of those two things are going to be a buffer. Uh, in either method, the whole idea is to focus on that ratio of the base over the acid. Okay? Um, I guess another way to show this would be B um, over BH plus if you had the, the the base format in this. Okay? Um, but you really want to focus on that ratio because as we've all seen now, pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the base component over the acid component. Okay? And essentially, as you manipulate this ratio here, that's how you can adjust the, the pH up and down. Okay? So that's how buffers are, are, are really created, is by adjusting the, the ratio of the, um, of the base over the acid. Now, practice problem 7 8, we're going to do these in class. They're a little tricky. 7 uh, is one you probably won't even do on the AP exam. I don't have any practice problems for you, but I think it's worth just kind of seeing how to do it. And number 8 um, could be an AP problem there. It's how you learn to neutralize an acid uh, to turn into a buffer. Uh, let's look at 9 here. Um, to create a buffer, um, it says, which of the following mixtures, if you mixed one liter of each together, would create a buffer? So really what you're looking for here is, uh, it's, it's the neutralizing version here. Okay, So here we have a strong acid mixing with a salt. And we'll come back to these. Then we have HF, which is a weak acid, and it's reacting with a strong base. Then we're looking at a strong acid and a strong base mixing together. Strong acid and a strong base. And then we lastly have a, a weak acid, and we have a salt. Okay, so two of these we can eliminate right away. Um, the first one, strong acid and a salt. This salt here is made up of neutral ions. Both ions are neutral because they come from strong acids and bases respectively. Okay, so this is a neutral salt. A neutral salt added to a strong acid would just produce uh, a strong acid solution because the neutral salt is not going to do anything to this strong acid. So essentially you have a really strong acid here. This is going to be, that's all it is. In the next one here, 
we have uh, a weak acid strong base. I'll come back to that one. Uh, letter C here we can we can eliminate as well. Whenever a strong acid and a strong base react together, the only thing they can produce is um, is water. And then if one of these is a higher concentration, like here we have 0.4 molar and we have 0.2 molar. Uh, basically, the hydroxide would neutralize only half of this strong acid, and what would be left is still strong acid. Okay, um, so in this. And this will probably make a little more sense. We do the titration um, portion of, of this chapter, but essentially, as you can see, here, half the strong base will neutralize half the strong acid, and you still have a fair amount of strong acid left over. That's why it's going to be strong. Now, these these two here have the potential to be buffers because this strong base here will neutralize the weak acid into its conjugate base form. Okay, so if you look at B a little more closely, when HF reacts with the hydroxide here, it's going to produce water but it's also going to produce the conjugate base. So as long as you have those two guys present, the weak acid and its conjugate, you could form a buffer. Unfortunately, in letter B here, because we're going to mix equal volumes, and these two things have equal concentrations, this is going to be a complete neutralization of HF into F-, minus, <clears throat> and none of this HF would be left over. So that's not going to work out. You've turned all of the weak acid into its conjugate. And if you only have this present, this is a weak base problem now, and uh, it's going to be a basic solution, which is not a buffer. Uh, let me say that again. Uh, a buffer can be acidic or, or basic, uh, but when you only have a weak base present, then it, you can't have a buffer. You need to have both uh, the, the conjugate acid-base pairs together for this to happen. Now, D is the one that ends up actually working because this salt here has the conjugate base of this weak acid here, and essentially that's what we have present now. We have the weak acid present, HF, We've supplied its its ion here, its conjugate base ion, and both two things are present, so that's going to make the buffer. Remember, a buffer needs uh, the a weak acid or a weak base and their respective conjugates to be present at the exact same time. Then you can have a buffer. In practice problem 10, uh, same thing, mixing these together here. Uh, why don't you try this one on your own here? It's a different way of looking at it, kind of the same thing. Okay, so we have a strong acid reacting with a salt. We have a strong acid again reacting with a weak base. We have a strong acid reacting with a salt. And we have a strong acid reacting with a strong base. So right off the bat, the strong strong there does not make a buffer because they neutralize to make water. And if one of those two things is left over, uh, according to like stoichiometry, then it's going to be a strong acid or a strong base. So this is not going to be one. No, never a strong, strong combination can make a, can make a, a buffer. Uh, the first one here, this salt is a neutral salt because both ions come from strongs, so they're neutral ions. A neutral salt and a strong acid or a strong base cannot produce a buffer, so that doesn't work. Uh, letter B here, we have a strong acid with a, with a, with a weak base, or with a with a weak acid here. My bad, weak acid. So therefore a strong acid and a weak acid is just an acid mixture. So if you ever have that together, that's not going to work. And then lastly, we have a strong acid and a salt. This salt here contains um, a basic ion. Okay, And that basic ion there, when it reacts with a strong acid, okay, so remember strong acids are really just H+, plus. that's what we care about. When it reacts with that F-, minus, it's going to turn into HF, which is the the acid. Here's the conjugate base form. These two guys are a conjugate acid base pair, and this particular neutralization will neutralize half of half of this 0.4 amount into the other. So therefore, this one does create a buffer. Okay. So these problems can be a little tricky at first. Just uh, make sure you come ready to practice these and uh, ask questions and try to figure out uh, analyzing these uh, combinations, which ones will create buffers. All right. Great job.